Gene stealer cults are the secret societies that are controlled by the tyrannid bioforms known as the gene stealers. They slowly consume the population of worlds by creating hybrid cultists that secretly plot for the invasion of the tyrannid high fleet. Integrating themselves in worker gangs, administratum facilities, manufactorum shifts, and hive city networks, they slowly and carefully spread their gene sex influence through the strata of imperial society. As mining workers and planetary militia fighters, they find it easy enough to secure low-grade weapons, either stealing them from those victims they silently take down, or securing them on the black market. Over time, they amass a primitive arsenal of solid-shot ballistic weapons, blasting charges, and pistols with which to wreak all manner of havoc when the time comes to reveal their true allegiance. And when the neophyte hybrids attack, their sheer numbers make them a force to be reckoned with. The foot soldiers of the cult may well fight in the Imperium's wars, defending their homes from the predations of chaos and from other Xeno species. In doing so, they defend the cult and all that it has worked to achieve. On the day of the Great Insurgency, when the populace looks to their bravest members for protection, the citizens are appalled to find out that their saviors are not fighting against the monsters boiling up from the depths, but alongside them. While some planetary defense forces are capable of eradicating a small and new gene stealer cult, they stand no chance against the continent-wide network of xeno-revolutionaries. When planet-wide revolts are executed by the cult, the Imperium has to rely on the Emperor's Angels of Death, the Space Marines. The murderous White Scars chapter has noticed an increase in gene stealer cult activity throughout their domain. This growing threat has been at the highest priority for the Sons of the Great Khan. The chapter has had to adapt to this elusive threat. Their ubiquitous, lightning-fast hit-and-run attacks are perfectly executed against enemies like the Orcs or the Necrons, but the chapter has had a challenge dealing with the Gene Stealer cults. One of the first encounters between the two factions was when a force of the Claude Star Gene Stealer cult cited an uprising against the Imperium on the hive world of Karakorum. Teeming with human life, the planet rang like a dinner bell for the Tyranid Hive Fleet, Knowing that they had to act fast, the White Scars sent in an element of the Chapter's Third and Eighth Brotherhood to this once prosperous world to eliminate the rebellion and to drive out the Sino scum. The White Scars' highly mobile style of warfare proved perfect for the planet's wastelands, where the cult was tormenting the resource transports that had established trade routes from Hive City to Hive City. As soon as the marauding caravans of the Claude Star made their appearance, the White Scar's assault bike squads and land speeders met the human abominations in a highly orchestrated death trap. In order to fully exterminate the Gene Stealer cult, the White Scars made sure to leave a few battered vehicles to return to the cult's hideout, where the orbiting battle barges of the White Scars would utterly destroy the static and ramshackle fortresses. The only location that was difficult for the Sons of the Great Khan was during the siege of the Hive City of Eber, the only one taken over by the cult. After it was pummeled by orbital land strikes, the ferocious White Scars jump pack equipped assault squads delivered a fast and decisive blow at the heart of the cult, obtaining victory for the chapter. When three squads of the White Scars Terminators first entered the dark and ancient corridors of the Space Hulk, known as the Drifting Misery, they were somewhat confident that the clouds of poison released into the abandoned derelict would have killed the majority of the gene stealers inside. But to their surprise, the ship was still infected with thousands of these vile xenos. It was assumed that the tyrannid bioforms had waited patiently inside the ship, snatching up pirates and exploration crew that was unlucky enough to set foot inside the gene stealers' domain. A wide variety of Tyranid hybrids were present, from half-orc monstrosities to unholy human abominations. It was clear that the cult reigned supreme aboard the ship. It seemed as if though the poison merely agitated the brood and made them more vicious. The White Scars went from room to room, engaging the Xeno broods in a ferocious battle that culminated in a desperate fight against the Tyranid Lictor. It sliced through the holy armor of the Terminator with ease, as its pair of long mantis-like claws dug deep into the valiant warriors. When the beast was finally slain and the Space Hawk examined in detail, it was discovered that the walls were covered with doomsday ravings, phrases and blood, telling of numberless killers from beyond the stars, of death made flesh, and of a great devourer. Among them was a single word repeated over and over again, Hydra. It took five solar months of brutal slaughtering to clear the entirety of the drifting misery, and the message written all over the Space Hawk would be seen again by the White Scars chapter when they encountered the full force of the Tyranid Menace.
Never has there ever been a more deadly or unpredictable quarry than the Tyranid High Fleets. The White Scars have been forced to learn and adapt faster than ever before in the face of this unrushing Xeno threat. Upon the world of Haddock in the 41st millennium, a strike force of the Second Brotherhood warriors under the command of Chaplin and Subdakar lost this contest of hunter and prey when the swarms of High Fleet Hydra completely overran them. While the Hydra appeared to be relatively small in size compared to the larger high fleets that fought during the Tyrannic Wars, the impression was a complete deception. It is still very capable of unleashing vast hordes of bioforms, burying its prey under sheer weight of numbers. The White Scars experienced this firsthand, as the atmosphere of Haddock was seeded with thousands upon thousands of spore clusters, each containing scores of dormant hormigons and termogons. The White Scars didn't hesitate to attack these spore clusters, and when the organisms detected this resistance, they released a powerful synaptic pulse. Upon sensing this psychic death cry, the embedded spore clusters immediately released their living cargo. Instinctively, these reinforcements converged upon the kill signal, driven to a frenzy by the echo of their predatory consciousness. The defeat was costly and gruesome, and could not be unavenged. Yet Kajok, the Khan of the Second Brotherhood, recognized that new hunting tactics would be required if this deadly prey were to be defeated and another massacre prevented. Drawing upon the wealth of strategic lore he had amassed in the libraries of Quan Zhou, and consulting for long solar days with the chapter Stormseers, Kajog Khan at last settled upon a stratagem. The White Scars met the Hydra once again upon the unstable volcanic world of Horatia Utuk, a planet Kojog Khan believed was the perfect hunting ground. Drawn by the biomass within the planet's spore hives, the Tyranids were already attacking when the White Scars arrived. Chitinous bodies piled against the city's walls like living ramparts. Kajak Khan sent in a strike force armed with every flamer weapon that could be amassed, from manned portable firearms to incendium cannons. Deploying to the Tyranids' rear at Hive Lokvor, the Second Brotherhood unleashed a firestorm that ravaged the mass broods and burned away Xeno flesh quicker than it could regenerate. The Tyranids turned upon the fresh prey, their psychic screams through the hive mind, drawing down waves of brood spores from orbit. Immediately, the White Scars fell back, plunging into the unstable lava fields and drawing the Tyranids after them. Battle Brothers were lost, as racing transports were overtaking by a surging tidal wave of Tyranids. Yet the White Scars knew that victory could not come without a cost, and plunged on, deeper into the shuddering landscape of cracked basalt plates and roiling lava. Still, they fired into the Tyranid masses, their aircraft crisscrossing in savage attack runs that slew ever more leader beasts. In their death throes, these monsters summon yet more biospawn into the lava fields, until at last, the critical mass of living organisms was too much for the fragile ground to take. Upon Kajog Khan's signal, gunships and tank transports executed screaming dives into the rupturing lava fields, swooping up the surviving white scars even as the ground shattered and molten rock surged hungrily upward. Hundreds of thousands of Tyranid bioforms were annihilated in a matter of solar minutes. Kajok Khan and his warriors soared upward back into their waiting strike cruisers to rearm, reinforce, and repeat this cunning ruse. It was only the first victory of a long and grueling campaign against the Hydra, but it was the beginning of vengeance. The White Scars and their successors will have to continue to search for new tactics to use against the Gene Stealer cults and the Tyranids. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. And if you guys have any specific battles that you guys would like us to talk about, let me know in the comment section below. Now, we also created a 40 facts on the White Scars and the Raven Guard versus the Alpha Legion. A week ago, I think I created a Honor Guard video for the White Scars. The Keshig, I think is how you pronounce it. So if you're interested in that, uh, check that out. Also, if you're interested in Gene Stealer cults, we created a video on the Tempestus Scions versus the Gene Stealers. The Tempestus Scions are actually a good um, rival against the Gene Stealers. And then we also did um, lore on the Hive Cult, which is a very specific Gene Stealer cult that I believe is trying to invade Terra or has already invaded Terra. Era. So check that out either in the archives or in the links down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for listening and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.